Hi, I'm author and designer Rebecca Kemp Brent. I used to make Halloween costumes for my children every year, and then a few years ago, my now grown daughter got into the world of cosplay and introduced me to that. She tells me that a lot of her friends who are cosplayers are interested in ways to make armor, and I have a whimsical take on that to share with you today. This is my Shining Knight, who's made from just a few simple supplies. Um, starts out with a hoodie, and I've used a pullover model, but of course you could also adapt this for a zip front hoodie if you prefer. The second thing that we need is some fabric to make the accessory pieces, the armor plates that go on our knight. And it could be that your first impulse is going to be to try and match your hoodie fabric exactly. The only ways I can think of to do that would be that you make the hoodie from scratch or that you buy a second hoodie and mine it for fabric. So what I did instead is go to my quilt shop and I've purchased a modeled almost solid fabric in a color that looks pretty good with the hoodie. If you look at historical armor, you'll find that they often mixed metals and sometimes even used gold plating. So feel free to use a color that suits your fancy. You'll also need a couple of buttons that we use for attaching the visors, which are actually movable. And sort of the core of the technique is this stabilizer, which is ultra firm, about a sixteenth of an inch thick, and comes with fusible already on one or both sides, or you can buy it without the fusible. You can figure out where to take most of the measurements for yourself, but there'll also be more information about that on our website. For the visor measurements, I started about three inches above the ears and measured across the nose for the widest part of the lower visor, and across the forehead for the upper visor. The shoulders are a little bit trickier to measure because you need to take several measurements. One of them is over the top of the shoulder from about the point where the arm breaks away from the body, front to back. And then you also need to measure from about the midpoint of the shoulder to the point of the shoulder and then a couple of inches beyond that so you know how wide you want to make your shoulder shields. On our website, you'll find these pieces, which are the actual pieces that I used in making this hoodie. This is a half scale drawing and when I do my demos today you'll notice that I'm working with half scale pieces. So of course you'll have to enlarge this to size before you use it and then alter it however you want so that the pieces have exactly the shape that you have in mind and so that they fit whomever you're trying to fit with your armor. You'll also notice that most of these are half patterns, which means that I'm going to put one edge on the fold. So for example, for the shoulder shield, I'll cut out one piece of paper, and then when I open it up, I have the full piece that I need to cut out. The shoulder shields are a little bit different from the others because they have this notch in the middle. And that's going to be a dart which we'll use to shape the armor plate as it comes over the shoulder. What I like to do is cut one of each piece out of my stabilizer first. And remember, these are half size patterns. And that way you can actually try these on the body and make sure that they're going to fit the way you want them to. You just put this dart together with a piece of tape for your try on. And you can see how that takes on the dimensional quality of the armor and then you can try that on the person who'll be wearing it. Once you have the right fit, then you want to cut the second shoulder plate, all the other pieces that you need, and you'll need to cut two layers of fabric for each of these pieces. For the pieces that are constructed flat, all you need to do is just rough cut around your stabilizer, which I've already fused in place to the wrong side of one layer of fabric. For the shoulder shield, we don't want to do that cutting just yet, and I'll show you exactly how we need to cut that so that we can incorporate those darts for shaping. Let's go over to the machine and I'll show you some tricks I used for putting my armor together. I'm going to start with a flat piece. This is the lower visor piece, and I have on my machine sort of an unexpected foot to be using, I'm going to start out with a zipper foot. And my reason for this is that we're using these cut pieces of stabilizer 
as patterns. So I'm using a zipper foot and I'm going to let the edge of my zipper foot ride just against the edge of the stabilizer, which makes kind of a nice ridge and it's going to be really easy to keep my stitches where I want them. I'm, you can adjust your stitch, your needle position to go right or left and you want these stitches to fall just a 32nd to a 16th of an inch away from that stabilizer. And the reason for that extra little gap in there is to give you some turning room when you're finished and ready to make the piece, turn it right side out. So I'm sewing through the two layers of fabric and you can see how easy it is to guide right along the edge of our stabilizer. And I'm just gonna continue to go all the way around my piece, but leave a gap so that I can turn this when I'm finished. After you've sewn all the way around, then you trim your seam allowances and leave um, a scant quarter of an inch around the edges. You also need to clip your curves and my favorite way of doing that is to use a pair of pinking shears because with the pinking shears, you always wind up with these beautifully spaced clips so you get a nice smooth curve when you turn. I've used a slightly different technique on this elbow shield, which is just an oval shape, because in my experience, anytime you leave a gap on a curved edge, you'll get a little bit of a flat spot when you turn. So you can see I've actually sewn all the way around this piece already. And then I'm going to flip to the wrong side and I'm going to clip through just the inside fabric. which will let me turn this right side out. And this open edge is going to be completely concealed between the armor and the hoodie when the piece is sewn together. Okay, when we get to the shoulder pieces and we need to sew the dart, the first thing I need to do is change to my all-purpose presser foot. And I'm going to set the machine for a triple stitch zigzag or a three, step zigzag, which means that in addition to the right and left needle drops, there's going to be one in the center too. And all I need to do is just bring the edges of that dart opening together, place it under my presser foot, and if you have a knee lift, this is a great time to use it so that you can keep both hands on your stabilizer at the same time you're raising and lowering that presser foot. Now I'm going to just stitch from the outside edge. I like the three-step stitch because it just seems to me that having that extra needle drop right in the center pulls everything together just a tiny bit better. Okay, so that gives us the shaping for our dart. And of course you wouldn't be doing this with the dark colored thread. I'm using that just for demo purpose. Then we have to sew the darts in our other pieces. And what I've done when I rough cut around the fabric pieces, I have actually cut just a quarter of an inch seam allowance on the dart edge. The rest of it you can be rough with, but on the dart you need to have the quarter inch seam allowance. I need a straight stitch for sewing those. And I have a little trick I'd like to show you there as well. You may know already that when you stitch a dart, you always sew from the wide end to the tip. And the traditional way for doing this is that you want to stitch clean off the fold and tie those thread tails into a knot. But this is a little trick that works just as well and you don't have to tie those knots. I'm going to start with a back stitch at the wide edge. And then as I get to the fold, I'm going to curve the dart just a bit and take a couple of stitches right on the fold edge and then take two or three stitches off my fabric. Now I raise my presser foot and flip the whole thing over and I'm going to sew back inside the seam allowance. So this works because it doesn't add any extra bulk there at the tip of the dart, and you have this little bitty thread loop that you've left, which functions the same way the knot would, so that you get a really beautiful shape and a nice tip at the end of your dart. Now you need to fuse these pieces together the way you did for the other pieces, and for doing that, you will need to have a little help at your iron. You can use a tailor's ham or one of my favorites, 
this pressing mitt, which lets me turn my hand into an ironing board so I can hold on to everything and iron right on my hand without burning myself. Then after you get these pieces prepared, you sew them together just the way you did the others and turn them right side out. All of these pieces should be top stitched after they're turned right side out. And that's not only because it looks nice, but also because it holds that stabilizer in place for you. I have one more thing I want to show you, and this is for making the joint on the visor so that you have some movability to it. We need to change the foot to our zigzag foot. And then I'm going to select a special buttonhole on the machine that's for making an eyelet. All you have to do is put your stabilized fabric, in this case your finished piece, under the foot and just let the machine go and it's going to stitch your eyelet. You can sew around it twice if you'd like to just to get a little extra thread coverage and then you'll use a punch just like this, an awl, to punch through the center. Now there are information on the website about attaching the pieces to your hoodie. You can sew them on by hand or by machine.